Hello, my name is Kyle Mandy and I'm the tax policy leader at PwC South Africa. It is my pleasure to, along with some of my colleagues, share with you our 2015 budget predictions. The 2015 budget is the first to be delivered by Nklan Klemeni, the Minister of Finance, and promises to be a real baptism of fire for him, as it is stacking up to be the most difficult budget since the advent of democracy. The Minister set the scene with his maiden medium-term budget policy statement in October last year, and that theme is set to be carried forward to the 2015 budget. That theme is about closing the gap. This theme alludes not only to one gap, there are many gaps that require closing. These range from the fiscal and current account deficits to the gap in actual economic growth against what is required to significantly reduce unemployment, to income and wealth inequality, and even to the gap in the supply of electricity. The credit rating agencies will be watching this budget particularly closely, and it is expected that the Minister will build on the budget framework tabled in October that largely kept the ratings agencies happy. To this end, it is expected that the budget will provide further detail on how it is proposed to reduce the budget deficit, bolster investment and achieve better value for money from government expenditure. In this video, we focus on the role the tax policy is expected to play in closing some of these gaps and hope that you find this insightful. One of the key considerations in the 2015 budget is how tax revenues are expected to perform. In the October mini budget, the estimated tax collections were revised downwards by 10 billion rand as a result of poorer than expected performance from corporate income tax and consumption taxes. Fortunately, the poor performance of these taxes was offset to some extent by a better than expected performance from personal income tax. The revenue statistics up to December published by National Treasury suggest that the performance of corporate income tax and consumption taxes are said to be even poorer than estimated in October. By our estimation, corporate income tax is set to fall short of the revised budget by about 9 billion rand and customs duties by about 4 billion rand. Fortunately, personal income tax continues to surprise and looks set to overshoot the revised budget by about 11 billion rand. With smaller budget surpluses on other taxes, it looks as if the revised tax revenue estimates will more or less be achieved in aggregate. However, downside risks remain and a key aspect will be the performance of corporate income tax in the final three months of the year as the impact of economic disruptions continue to filter through. Unfortunately, this means that the additional taxes announced in the mini-budget are now inevitable. At that time, the Minister indicated that at least an additional 12 billion rand would be sought for the 2015-16 fiscal year, and that this would be raised from tax policy and administration reforms. Further details of these are expected to be announced in the budget. So what do we expect these reforms to look like? Listen to what my colleagues have to say to find out. The most anticipated response to this year's budget is where the Honorable Minister of Finance, Mr. Ntlantla Nene, will raise the additional 12 billion. We think the most likely source of this additional tax revenue will be from the fuel levy, and this is why. South Africa's fair trade is relatively low by international standards, and this provides a case for a rate increase in line with international trends. However, because VAT is applied uniformly, irrespective of income levels, low-income individuals will be hit harder with a VAT rate increase. We therefore believe that the VAT rate is unlikely to be increased at this stage. An introduction of a 45% super tax rate for individual taxable income over 1 million rands will raise approximately 7 billion rands. Although such a super tax rate will solve about 60% of the 12 billion rands, it will be accompanied by the following negative effects. It will act as a disincentive to work, entrepreneurship, and savings. It will negatively impact economic growth and create opportunity for arbitrage with corporate tax. Such increases will therefore not be conducive to investment-led growth. According to Paying Taxes 2015 study, South Africa's effective rate of tax on company profits is significantly above the global and regional averages. Any increase will negatively impact competitiveness of South Africa's tax rates and will not be in line with the stated intentions to promote investment-led growth. We therefore expect the corporate tax rate to remain at 28%. 
with significant decreases in the price of fuel in the recent months due to lower oil prices, this presents an inviting opportunity for an increase in the general fuel levy. A 50 cents increase in the general fuel levy will raise approximately 10 billion rands in additional tax revenues and therefore has the potential to contribute most of the 12 billion additional revenue. Motorists can therefore expect to see a significant increase in the general fuel levy in this year's budget. Tax avoidance and evasion continues to be a major focus area of SARS. We expect to see a continued commitment to curbing such practices. In particular, South Africa will continue to participate in the international initiatives of the G20 and OECD with respect to base erosion and profit shifting, commonly referred to as BEPS. The Davis Tax Committee has recently released its first interim report on BEPS, and there is a reasonable chance that some of the more basic recommendations contained therein will be considered for implementation in 2015. This might possibly include new source rules to deal with the taxation of the digital economy. Transfer pricing, of course, is a hot topic globally at the moment, um, and South Africa is no exception in this respect. So we do expect some announcements to be made in our South African 2015 budget. The OECD has made a number of recommendations regarding transfer pricing documentation, and these have been endorsed by the Davis Tax Committee in its interim report on BEPS. So we expect that there will be some announcement in this budget um, in respect of transfer pricing documentation and specifically on the question of whether the documentation will become compulsory. Um, and we think this will apply to companies with turnover in excess of a billion rand, which is what's been rec recommended by the Davis Committee. We also note that the OECD has more recently issued additional guidance on transfer pricing documentation, um, and in particular, the OECD proposes the introduction of country-by-country -country reporting from the 1st of January 2016 for multinationals with revenues in excess of 750 million euros. So we expect some kind of commentary or maybe some specific proposals in this respect um, in this year's budget. Other developments in transfer pricing are ongoing as part of the OECD's BEPS project. So we don't expect any specific announcement um, in, that, in, in that space. But we do, however, hope that we'll see an update on the status of our new interpretation note on transfer pricing and thin capitalization, or possibly some legislative effect being given to the OECD's transfer pricing proposals.